So far, I have managed to build the initial prototype constructed with ESP32 Feather and BNO055, which is connected to computer via serial port. The BNO055 is acting as inertial measurement unit which delivers the raw sensor data. Out of all the sensor data, I have used accelerometer data and temperature data as of now. Accelerometer gives three axis accelerations in terms of gravity and linear motion. The SI unit of acceleration data is in meter per second square. I have already suppressed the gravity from the accelerometer data. To visualize an in real time data plotting into 2D graph, I have installed a serial plotter software in which I can see both calibration output and the raw accelerometer data together. And I can switch on and off the data I need to plot in real time without changing the code. Finally, using basic trigonometry, I have managed to determine how accelerometer data can be used to approximate tilt or inclination in degrees at 3D space. However, the vibration or the sudden acceleration is causing the problem in approximating the tilt measurement. After knowing how accelerometer works, although I can justify the behavior, but my expectation does not match with the requirement and my today's topic is to handle the noise which is causing the drift in approximation of tilt measurement. If you have not watched the previous video, please check the description below. You can also visit my Patreon site to read the complete paper and to download the source code. This part of the series are mostly inspired by Mr. Paul from toptechboy.com. I have learned a lot from his video and have taken the source code reference from his website. I have given a link in the description. Please visit his website if you want to know more in details. So without any further delay, let's dive into it now. If you are new to this channel, please consider to give a like and subscribe. That means a lot to me. We have two issues to deal with. One is related to the vibration or sudden acceleration causing incorrect approximation of inclination angle calculation and second one is related to the inclination angle more than 89 degree causing the incorrect calculation as well. Let's deal one after another to start with. When I shake the sensor on X axis keeping Y and Z axis fixed, I could see the sudden change in acceleration reported by the accelerometer. Let's call each data points our signal and the signals impacting our approximations are noise. The big jump of the signals are high frequency and small steady signals are low frequencies. If I can detect the high frequency signals and eliminate them from the inclination calculation, then we will get a smooth reporting of the angle calculation. However, more than 89 degree will still be an issue for us that we will take care of later. So our goal is to smoothing or denoising the signal. To do that, I will use a concept called low pass filter. This is another new topic I learned during this implementation. By definition, a low pass filter is a filter that passes signals with a frequency lower than a selected cutoff frequencies and attenuate the signals with frequencies higher than the cutoff frequencies. Please note the word I use attenuate. It means reduce the intensity of the signal. Let's say I have received a continuous data point in a pattern of 2, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5 and then suddenly I have started receiving 10, 11, 10, 12 and so on. In this case 10 and 11 are considered as high frequencies compared to the initial numbers which we need to detect and transform or eliminate. What a low pass filter does is to pass the low frequency signals without any transformation and attenuates the high frequencies by transforming those to a less intensive signal. And our job is to take those high frequency signals and smoothen them out either by prediction or by detecting the behavioral changes. The best way is to do that is by making a pair of two data points and trusting the old one or the left one to determine the possibility 
of the new one. This means if we trust a percentage of old measure value and then remaining trust percentage will be determining the new value. Say my old value is 5 and new value is 10 and my trust percentage of old value is 90. Then the new value would be 90% of the old value which is 5 plus 10% of the new value which is 10. This will give me an approximation of the new value in comparison to the measured new value. In this case the new value would be around 5.5 in comparison to 10. That means 10 will be replaced by 5.5. When I pick up the next sample, the old value become 5.5 and the new value will be 11. Applying the formula again, the new value will be 6.05. This process will continue. Let's call the trust factor is filter precision or trust precision. If you try with 50% trust precision on each other, then the value after 5 would be 7.5 in comparison to 10. This time it is on higher side comparing to the previous 90% precision calculation and the following number would be 9.25, 9.6 and so on. If I try 95% of trust precision then approximate value will be 5.25, 5.5 and so on. This is much closer to the old values. The more the precision factor more smoothen in the frequency would be and lower the precision higher the frequency. A low pass filter is a kind of gate which creates a pair of numbers and tries to derive a mean using a precision factor which replace the right side of the number by the mean value. The pairing of the number is called kernel. Based on the mean value derivation and updating the right hand side number is called attenuate. The process of approximation based on old value to smoothening out the number series instead of sudden rise is called attenuation. To wrap up, a low pass filter is a filter that allows signals with a frequency less than a particular cutoff frequencies to pass through it and depress all signals with frequencies beyond the cutoff frequency. Now it's time to implement the low pass filter into the sketch. I am working on the same code from the last episode where I left. I have made one change that is I have added a new header and it is imumaths.h. I have no idea what this header value does but I have seen this added in Adafruit site sample code. If you know the reason please let me know. In my previous code I already have measured the inclination angle based on acceleration data and the value are stored in a variable called theta. Let me call the theta to theta m or theta measured. I have changed the variable name everywhere in my code to theta m. I will work on the theta first or on x axis first to see the progress and then we will move to phi. I haven't touched the z axis yet, I will do it later. I have declared two more variables to work on the low pass filter. Those are theta old and theta new. These two variables will be the sliding window to store the pair of values or we can call it kernel. The initial old value or the left side of the kernel I have set it to 0. The precision to calculate the filter value say to start with 90% which I have defined at the beginning in a variable called cutoff. Currently it is hard coded. I'll try to get the value from the user input to bring the flexibility. The formula to calculate the theta filtered new value based on old value and the major value will be theta filtered new is equal to theta filtered old multiplied by cutoff which is 90%. That means I'm trusting 90% of the old value of the kernel plus theta measured multiplied by 1 minus cutoff. That means 10% I am trusting on the measured value. This will give me the new filtered value of theta. Finally at the end I have printed the value in the serial port to visualize and updated the old filtered theta value with a new derived filtered theta value. Now it's time to test the code. For that I have changed the serial plotter channel name to theta filtered new and assigned a different color code for that. From the output I can see the 90% trust on the old value is showing pretty good smooth result but it's slow. It is reaching to the peak after a quite a bit of sample received from the sensor. Using the same pattern the filter is bringing down the curve as well. Now if I apply sudden force to lift x axis then the filter is smoothing the rise and fall smoothly. 
As per the new word I learned, I can say the attenuation process is working perfectly. Now if I try the original problem of sudden acceleration due to the linear movement, I can see those spikes have almost gone or attenuated. This is a great result that means we have done the first pass successful implementation of low pass filter. However, the time to catch up the reality has become a new problem. Let's see the behavior with 50% trust precision. With 50% trust, the catch up to the reality is faster, but the unexpected acceleration is causing the problem in the tilt measurement. Even like if I try the sudden acceleration or the vibration or the linear acceleration is also become a problem with the 50% trust. With 99%, the result is very slow but almost accurate, where 50% it is very fast but less accurate. The shaking problem or sudden acceleration problem remains same with 50%. After several precision tests, the precision value 95% somehow is very stable. However, it is too slow. The vibration is almost gone and which is a correct behavior. This has led me to another problem of trust, where accelerometer reading of the sensor behavior is accurate, but approximation of the angle measurement has become problematic. Given a scenario when my character wants to cross a barrier of certain height, if I use the approximate inclination angle, then my character will never be able to cross the barrier, as the approximate inclination angle will never reach to the peak which accelerometer is detecting. In this case, math has compromised the scenario. Now I have a new problem. To eliminate the noise due to the vibration, I used low pass filter, which works perfectly but the speed is compromised with the reality. If I want to keep the speed of the angle approximation, the vibration will cause incorrect inclination detection. This is kind of chicken and egg problem, where both cannot be resolved in one solution. As per mathematics, when there are two variables to be resolved, one equation is not enough. That means, given the current problem, one accelerometer data is not enough to determine the tilt. Therefore, I need to evaluate what I am getting from other sensors, which can complement the behavior. Other sensors like gyroscope, magnetometer also gives orientation data. If one problem can be compensated by the other sensor, then we can easily trust that sensor and rest we will trust accelerometer. This means more learning ahead. I'll start with gyroscope and then we'll follow magnetometer if required. But of course, in the next video. Before that, let me implement the same logic of low pass filter for phi. That means y axis approximation of inclination measurement. The process is same like theta measurement. First rename the phi with phi measured then declare two variables phi filtered old, phi filtered new and apply the same formula to determine the phi filtered new based on the precision. Finally replace old value with new filtered value and plot phi filtered new to the graph. With both the value plotted on the graph a small smoother behavior is expected and here is the result. Although the measurements are well behaved but the reality is little deviated from the outcome because of the slowness. Now it's time to conclude the topic of low pass filter. What I have learned today is a low pass filter is a filter that passes signals with a frequency lower than a selected cutoff frequency and attenuates the signals with frequencies higher than cutoff frequency. We could have just eliminated the high frequency noise but it might lead us to a wrong data point of tilt estimation. Therefore, we choose to process of attenuation. In the next episode, I'll explore gyroscope data and learn about about gyroscope, what it is and how does it work. As you know, I am also learning and my resources are either Google suggested research paper or YouTube suggested video on the topic. Based on the time spent on the learning last few weeks, I have made this video to demonstrate my learning. I might be wrong or not able to explain properly in some case. In that case, please do not dishearten and hate me for that. If you could point out the problems, please comment and help me to rectify it. On that note, I am finishing this video here. I hope you like the process and the strategy of the development. Please stay tuned for such interesting topic and the solution. Till then, stay safe, take care and thank you for watching.